Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about painting with war colors. So uh, war colors is a line of paints I'm a big fan of if you watched my uh, miniature brand uh, paint review then you saw me talk about war colors. Um, they're very interesting because they use a different sort of medium, namely a gel-based medium. Now, I particularly like these paints. I think they're fantastic, especially for the style that I paint in. However, they can be a challenging change. If you're used to something like uh, Citadel or um, uh, Vallejo or something like that, these are going to be very different. First things first, when I put them on the palette here, look at how much that's standing up. I don't know if you can look at that. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. See this purple? Look at how that's like a little blob that's actually like still got verticality to it, right? You wouldn't see that with other paints. And that's happening because of the gel medium. Now, as you can see, some of these have slightly different uh, abilities to do that. It's nothing different about the paints. They're all the same. They've all been shook the same, all like that. Just it's what's normally going to happen because of different pigments that get used. So I'm gonna we're gonna walk through today how I would how I paint with these and how you can best make use of them. I've picked some very bright colors here to show up well, and I've got a little Chaos Warrior, so I thought we would do a little Slaneshi Chaos Warrior. Um, so the first thing I'll say is they work really well over Zenithal highlighting, which is one of the reasons I quite enjoy them. Uh, because as we all know, I don't believe in painting over straight black. I think that's a giant waste of your life. Stop doing it. So, they thin very well, but we, what you need to do is get them really mixed in with that water. So I'm just taking little bits of water here from my, my, uh, my palette and sort of mixing it up, mixing it around. And you, you'll notice that they maintain that gel nature quite well. And then we give it a little test. To see what we've got and you notice there we've got a nice consistency so if this guy was going to have a purple cloak i'd work that down and you can see where the difference where it actually becomes somewhat runny and it actually starts behaving more like a liquid than like a gel and so then if i was going to glaze this cloak it's now watery enough and it's glaze thickness that I can go ahead and do that. Now, of course, normally I would probably just shoot this through the airbrush, but we're going to do it this way just so we can, you know, actually see it on camera. So the key being when you're working things into a glaze, and as usual, you want to be wicking off the excess. I had a little bit too much on my brush there because I'm moving quickly. Nice and easy. And so the first part, so what I'm saying here is, this is sort of the easiest perhaps use of it. You notice that uh, my drying time, even with it very thin in a glaze, is still pretty reasonable. Like I can go in, I can work it deeper into the shadows, that kind of thing. When you thin it, you probably just need to add more water than what you're used to. And because if you added this, this amount of water to say a citadel paint or to a vallejo paint it would frankly become immediately glossy and runny and be more or less worthless whereas because of the gel medium i can add that much water and get a really nice effect let's get the last little bit done here and you can see the difference like i really want to make sure that's clear notice the difference between where it's still acting like a gel and now where i've added enough liquid that it's now acting like, you know, I don't know, like a liquid, okay? As usual with the glaze, we make sure to wick off the extra because we don't want the paint out of control. And then we just get the last bits on there. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit and we'll come back to it. Okay, nice and simple. So working with our glazes, it's great. You just need to add more water than normal. Now, for his armor... I thought we'd go for a fun sort of magenta color. By the way, the colors I'm working with here are 
violet, and allegedly purple. Uh, those are the pinkest things I've ever seen. I ordered the pink knowing full well they were purple, but just a note that the pink color on the site, or the purple color on the site is actually quite pink. Okay. So, again, I'm going to keep this relatively thin, and this is one of the keys. I mix that in. It's a little bit thicker because I didn't add any more water to it. But let's take like this uh, less leg plate here, for example. Let's wick off some extra there. So we'll just get some of this on here. And we'll get it on his little knee plate too. He's going to be a little pink Chaos Warrior. Are you going to tell him he shouldn't be a pink Chaos Warrior? I don't think so. So we can work over the Zenithal and preserve it there. Now, the other option with how you can use this paint, I'll do it on the other side here. Instead of going to the thinned part, I'm going to take some of my pink, mix it with some of my purple. Oh, way too much, because I only want a little bit. Okay, there we go. Well, let's get that a little pinker. So now at this point, I mean, I have liquid in my brush, of course, so it's not just straight paint, but it's much still more like a gel. And if I'm painting in this way, the other way you can use this is I can just kind of push it on there. And again, rather than like a normal layer paint where I'm looking to sort of move the brush once and cover the area, what I can do instead is because it's got a longer drying time, because it's gel, I can just sort of push the paint around. So I could get into the lighter pink here, because I want this right here, and then work it down, and I could smooth it in very quickly. Because it's got this longer drying time, I can just sort of wet blend it straight out there, right? I could even take the darker color, if I want to get right into that dark purple, add in maybe a little black, because I really want to get some strong shadows going up here. And I can get up under there and really lay in my shadows. And then I can just kind of feather that out. Okay. So the key being when you're when you're pushing this paint around, when you're, or I shouldn't say that, I said I should say when you're utilizing this paint, one of the tricks is you are pushing it around. Notice I'm using shorter strokes. I'm often void blending. That is to say, I, I get the excess paint off my brush and I work it in there. And what I get is something like that. Okay. You'll see my other side. Let's look at the cloak. That's dried very nice there. There we go. Preserved all that zenithal. Looking great. If I wanted to reinforce that some, let's go into my purple. Let's get some of my white in there. The white of, uh, of War Colors is actually a wonderful color because it's very smooth. Uh, I will say that if you want to make this paint act a little more like normal paint, we can also add some flow improver, and I'll show you what that looks like as well. But if I wanted to reinforce some of these lines, just give it a little edge highlight there. Again, so I'm keeping it pretty straight. That was a little too strong. There we go. Your finger, the best painting tool. And we just quickly get some edges in there. Right? And there we've got some sharper lines. Just that easy. So, the point being is that uh, in cases like that, it's going to act a lot like a paint. Or just any normal paint you use. And it's great for things like edge highlighting because that gel isn't going to run. One of the big problems I see with people when they do edge highlighting is they have too much paint on their brush and it's too runny. And so when they move up the edge, you see this seepage where it's come down, the brush has bent and it's seeped down. The gel paint, as long as you're very lightly touching, it isn't going to get away from you. It doesn't get it squirrely. And as a result of that, it's very easy to, to work in that way. 
So let's do the helmet up here and we'll go ahead and get into this fully. I'm going to show you the sort of push around method I'm talking about just to really reinforce that. Okay, so we want him to have a nice pretty pink helmet here. So I'm going to go ahead and just, and you'll notice I'm not going for smooth, like oftentimes when you're, when you're painting and you're using those other paints, you would want to go for nice, long, smooth strokes. I'm not really doing that. I'm just getting the paint on there and then pushing it around some. And that's because of that gel. Okay. Again, I can just keep adding paint onto here. And because it's a very wet paint, oftentimes when you're when you're dealing with paints like this, you know, people one of the things you learn early on is you shouldn't put wet paint over wet paint because you'll pull up the old paint, right? It's sort of one of the first lessons you get. Don't pull up your old paint. You gotta wait for things to dry. Blahzy blahzy blah. Guess what? You don't have to wait for things to dry with the work color stuff because because of the gel, it's all gonna mix in there together. So I can just keep very aggressively naturally blending this stuff. Now, I'm not saying I couldn't pull some paint off. You certainly can, okay? But as long as you work relatively quickly, you won't. And I can keep slapping some paint around here and get some down in the shadows, up under his helmet. So it's a more, the style I would describe it when you're working with it, it's a little more like working on the figure. You're almost treating the figure like the palette where you would normally mix your paints. And you're going from there. And then eventually you're going to hit a time when you need to kind of stop. And you'll, you'll get the sense of that. But there's going to come some point when you need to be like, okay, now I am going to start pulling up paint as it starts setting. Right? So you don't have an infinite working time. It's still acrylic paint. Okay, but there what I've got is a nice, it looks really, really sharp on film or on a camera. It's not that sharp in reality. Let's get some more on there like that. Let's see if we can smooth that out. There we go. So we'll let that dry and we'll come back to it. But you can see what I did there. You see how my strokes were shorter, were more pushing the paint on the actual miniature. When I say this paint acts differently, that's one of the ways I mean it, okay? Because the other great, great, great thing for war colors is doing things like your void blending. I tend to be a, I tend to be a void blender. That is to say, you put some paint on and then you lick your brush or something and then you just kind of smooth out the edges. And notice how easy that works there, right? Okay. To be a to give you a very big example of that, let's do this. So I because it's kind of hard to see me working on those little bits of armor. So let's do a nice big example. There you go. That's a nice stark line. Okay. Way too stark for that cloak, but that's all right. So while it's still wet, we go in. We cleaned off the edge of the brush. And then we just kind of void it down, right? And then what we get is a smoother transition. Just that easy. A little bit extra right there. There we go. So because of that gel, you can push it around really easy with that type of blending. Like, look how that just smoothed out that fast. Okay. Now I could make that smoother. I can let that dry, do it again. I could go in with a glaze to cover it up once it's dry. All of that is certainly possible and more than fine. You know, do the, you know, you can take this to whatever level you want to take it to ultimately. Let's do it again on the edge of the cape. So again, I just... 
I'm just pulling the paint. And there we go. See? We got a nice edge of that cape now. Again, we'll come back to it in a minute so I can smooth it out because I'm guessing eh, that helmet's still a little wet. And that's what I mean when, you, when I say you got a longer working time. You really do. These are pretty great as far as that goes. But the point being is that your, your normal painting techniques of just like, I'm going to go, I get a brush load of the paint, I come over here, I put the brush load of the paint on in long strokes, probably not the right way to go with war colors. They're great for building up these wonderful smooth blends because I can take something like that leg plate right there and I want to bring a highlight down on this corner. I can just push some on there, right? I just put a nice thick dollop on there. And then I can just smooth it right out. Right? And just that easy, boom, I've got a nice blend. Now, is it a perfect blend? No, of course not, because that would take time and a couple layers of glazes. But is it usually going to be good enough for your tabletop? Heck yeah, okay? And because these are gel-based, again, we'll do it on the kneecap here. It's just so easy. I put on a little dollop of the straight thick paint. And then I'm just going to pull it and smooth it. And there we go, right? So I can do the same thing in reverse if I want to darken the bottom. And I will say the War Colors Black is excellent for this sort of thing. When thinned, it makes an excellent shade, right? So there you go. Now all of a sudden we've got this Big, very powerful transition. Like, that really looks super dark on camera. Again, not quite so strong in real life. Let's get the back of the helmet here, shall we? Nice big dollop of the purple. And then we're just going to smooth it out. Oops. There we go. And now we've got a nice transition on that helm. Look at that. From very bright down to that wonderful organic shadow. If we want to smooth out our earlier blends, now that we're pretty much dry there, guess what? We're going to go back into that purple. We're going to work it into a liquid over here on the palette. Into our violet, I should say. So I got a nice thin glaze I can test. Yep, that's very thin. Wick off some excess. And then I just give it a nice glaze to smooth everything out. Right? So, there you go. That's more or less war colors. I won't paint the whole Chaos Knight here, but you can see there's a couple different ways you can utilize it, right? So, I can, to, to sum up, when I'm working it into a glaze, you need to add more water than you normally would, Okay. Uh, because you have to get that gel moving. And you don't want to try to glaze with something that's still in sort of the gel state where it's meant, because glazes need to be long, confident strokes with just the right amount of paint deposited, okay? So you need to get that, you need to get water, you need to get it flowing. Um, if you're not going for that, your other alternative is you just push the paint around on the actual miniature. Now, I was doing void blending with it, but understand, I wouldn't have to. I could at the same time be very controlled and do my edge highlighting in the same way, right? Or I can put the big dollop on naturally and then go to my next color and just start blending that in like that. If I wanted to take a more layer approach to it and then start blending the next color in like that. And I could go that direction too. Right? And that's fine. All of those work okay. The point is, when you're working with these, you need to think about the miniature 
more as your palette. That being the trick. Okay? So, hopefully that helps you work with war colors a little better. As I said, they're great for things like... Uh, for things where you're working with the Zenithal. I find that the ability to either go thick and then build up or spread out or void blend, uh, two brush blending is another way to, that people commonly do it, uh, works great with loaded brush if you have the watery side paint in the, uh, in the belly of your brush and then you use the thick dollop on the tip. Oh, that's perfect. These are a dream come true for loaded brush blenders, let me just say that, because they can exist in both of those states so easily. So... Uh, if you're going to go thick, just make sure that you properly push the paint around once it's on there. Don't just try to apply that thick paint like you would your normal Vallejo, Citadel, whatever paints, because you're not going to get a good experience out of it. It doesn't paint the same way, and that's intentional. It's meant to work in a different fashion, Okay. Okay, and we're back. And you can see we've got the rest of the Chaos Warrior armor. It's all done there. He's uh, he's ready to go. You can see how we blended it all in, right? And a lot of what I did here, so for like this corner, went to a finer brush. One of the nice tricks you can do with, uh, with this is you can mix the flow to keep it moving. So, for example, I could get a very watery black purple, something quite dark. Okay, but that I that I watered down as we covered before, and I can get that up in the shadows there, void that off, and then have my lighter purple pink color down here on the edge, but keep that thick. And effectively I could just take it and I can actually just kind of load a brush right there on the miniature. And what I end up with is a nice transition that kind of blends those two colors very smoothly right and again as i mentioned before because it's a gel and you have a very fine control if i want a nice edge highlight here right right on this shoulder pad and just come right along there and i get a nice clean line okay all right so i had also mentioned one of the other things you could do is you can go to your uh you can get out your sort of flow improver and you can act make this act more like a traditional paint, and that's certainly true. So, let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay? So here I've got some flow improver in a little bottle. I'm just going to put a couple of drops on that on my palette over here. Sorry. I just realized I had turned my light on quite a bit brighter while I was working in between. Okay. So now I'm going to take some of this, uh, let's get this pink, nice mid-tone here. And you can see as I put it in the flow improver, how it just starts running very much like a normal paint. Okay. Thought my light is tough to see where it ends. <laughs> where isn't flow improver? Okay, there we go. So now, now when I put it on there, right? It's going to act and flow much smoother, much like I would expect out of, say, a regular liquid medium paint to work. So, it can be a great, that, that's, and you might think to yourself, well, why would I want to use this paint then if I've got a, um, if I have to add some additive just to make it act like normal paint? Well, because I don't think there is such a thing as normal paint. I think there's a paint that we're used to and its properties and the way it acts, but I don't think there's anything innately right or correct about that paint, okay? And what I like about the war colors is I can do all three very easily. What I mean by that is I have the thickness so I can do the act, make it act more like a heavy body acrylic where I'm actually doing a lot of the work on the figure. I can thin it down into a hyper thin glaze because it'll handle a bunch of water because of the gel, and so I can make it act like that, or I can utilize a little flow improver, depending on how much means how runny it's going to get, and I can make it act back like a normal paint again. So the point being is that I can do sort of everything with this paint, and that's one of the reasons I quite enjoy it. Because in the end, it lets me, at that moment, apply the proper painting style 
for the thing I'm trying to achieve. If I want to glaze in some deep shadows, I can do so very quickly and easily. I just add some more water to a bit of the paint. If I want to do some nice sharp edge highlighting, I can do that very easily because I know the paint's not going to run. I can just use it straight out. If I want to get a nice blend on the edge of an armor plate, I can put it on there thick and then just void blend it out and so on and so forth. So there you go. That's our, our night all blended up there. You can see just a tiny drop of flow improver and you can see how that's like that was one drop of flow improver and boom, instantly you're you're running again. By the way, if you're curious, I like uh, Vallejo or sorry, Liquitex Flow Aid. That's the one I use. I apologize. I was looking at a different product side by side with each other. I like the Liquitex Flow Aid. I find it to be the most effective product for this. But uh, there we go. Our Slaneshi Chaos Warriors armor is all done. And uh, we've got some nice, I think, very sharp poppin' blends and uh, some good deep shadows. Exactly what we'd want to see. It looks like he's ready to go. Uh, ready to go have some a pleasurable time cutting up the enemies of chaos. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I hope this will help you paint with war colors. Uh, utilize them in the different way. They are a very interesting paint. And as I mentioned, or uh, as I've said before in previous videos, I'll drop a link down there below. So if you are interested in picking up some war colors, you can do so. Uh, so there'll be some links down to the paint sets. Uh, I love all the regular matte paints. The base paints that they have will actually cover a lot better. The normal paints are quite transparent. If you want ones with more coverage, there's a base set. Uh, the inks are great. The glazes are great. The only thing I don't like is the metallics. So there you go. Those are, that's my own personal opinion. Yours may be different. But uh, so, as I said, I hope this was helpful. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Share it with somebody. And uh, as always... See you next time.